Good morning from Port Barton, Palawan, the Philippines. This is our last full day here, and I don't know if you can hear this in my voice or see it in my eyes, but it is very early this morning, but for a very good reason. Today we're going to take the island hopping tour A in Port Barton. It's going to be very different, I think, than what we did in El Nido, a little bit more relaxed. There's actually snorkeling here, and I've heard there's good snorkeling in the area. And if we're lucky, we're going to see some sea turtles. But we're up a little bit extra early because there's so much to do today. First thing we need to do is eat. So I'm going to take you to my favorite place for breakfast in Port Barton. Although it seems to be very early, kids are already heading to school. I think it's because it gets so hot here later in the day. They go early and then they're done around lunch. And actually one of the things that I was saying to Alan, because we've been here for almost a week, is that I realized as we were thinking about this tour that there are a lot of Western tourists here, but not, not a lot, lots of kids coming by, not a lot of Filipinos. And so Alan said, as a rule, he thinks Asian tourists prefer more infrastructure, more facilities. We are definitely in a small town. Hello! Okay, so we're going to have coffee today, but... Oh, thank you. We're gonna also try something else that I learned is very different that you would see at a coffee machine. So here we've got uh, hot chocolate, Chocolate, three in one. Put the money in there. And then the thing that I want to try is beef bulalo. Bulalo? Bulalo. All right. Pardon? How would you drink that? It's beef broth. No, I mean, what about the glass? Oh, we need a glass. The glass mug is the pot inside in there. Oh, it's in. Do they put it down? Oh, the whole thing. They put the whole thing in. All right. So just put the money in and choose. Okay. Oh, okay, that's great. Oh, wait, we're done. It's hot. So they told us that, yeah, it's beef stock or beef broth. And the kids have this. This is their warm drink in the morning. It's very hot. Hmm, it's good. This is actually nice. If you don't have any kind of caffeine in the morning or you don't want coffee, this is just a really nice, hmm, bulalo. I am digging it. But Alan, he's gonna get a coffee because he needs a little bit of caffeine this morning. I'm good with this. Okay, so this is Gaya Khan. They do have a menu with local breakfast, omelets, American, European, continental, Israeli. But then also they have pancakes, burgers, well pizza, you wouldn't have that for breakfast. Oh, actually I would, and a bunch of other things. And then outside of breakfast, they also have the carandera style. So that's where they have the uh, food that's already made and you kind of just choose. We eat that all the time here. All right, you want waffles? Uh. I think I'm going to get one of the salogs, but I've learned that you should always ask first if everything's available because I always choose the one that is not. Alan keeps asking. He's like, oh, so it's broth, it's broth. I think he now wants my bula loaf. Or maybe you could have your own. It's good, isn't it? ready to go we're being picked up at nine o'clock which is pretty crazy because the beach is just there so unlike El Nido where you have to go to the beach and the craziness to find your boat they actually pick you up and they take you to the beach so you know exactly where you're going so so far I'm liking this tour that was a little bit hectic so basically what happened was uh, the boat captain was about 15 minutes late shows up on one bike and says okay let's go but he was only on one bike two seconds later another one showed up so yeah it wasn't gonna be three of us on one bike here is a boat called the castaway so just learned that it's a filipino owner and he saw the movie castaway loved it so much he named his boat after it so cute so we're just waiting for the boat captain who's at the coast guard right now just getting clearance to go so this tour is 
a little bit different than what we experienced in El Nido. In El Nido, the guide was very much a guide. Arnold was really got a lot of laughter. He was an entertainer. And then the group really interacted a lot here. I have a feeling this is going to be more of just a straight up, we're dropping you off at each place. This is called Sandbar or Starfish Island, where apparently you can get go see some starfish. So we're gonna check that out first. But I do appreciate that he did warn everyone not to touch the starfish. As soon as you touch them, you can kill them. But you can see all of the boats, I think, stopped here first. So it feels like one of those like TikToks of, you know, Instagram versus reality. The first is seeing people alone on this deserted island. And then you actually see you're just walking around with everybody else. That's just kind of how it's going to be. If you're going to take a group tour and you're going to go during high season, be prepared to be with lots of other people. Everyone wants to go to the popular spots. If you want to be by yourself, hire a private boat and come like an hour early and you can have this whole place to yourself and take lots of Instagram photos and reels and make the rest of us believe that we will be here alone. And to be honest, as I make fun of this, this is one of the places I wanted to see because I had seen other people go here and I haven't seen a starfish in a very long time. There are supposed to be lots here. And I think that actually the reason why everyone is here right now is because it's low tide. High tide, you can't see them because it actually covers this little island. Have you seen a starfish before? Where do they have them in Indonesia? In the uh, south part of Indonesia. Watch out, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, I see. In the south of Padang, they have starfish? Oh, you've never taken me. All right, we spotted a starfish and our first Filipino here. So one of the things that she said, she actually lives now in Canada, but she said that um, poor Barton is underrated and that Filipinos tend to go to overrated places, places that they know everybody else loves. So while we saw Filipino tourists in El Nido. She said they're all in Puerto Princesa. So I feel like maybe we should have spent a few more days there. We definitely saw a lot of them on our river tour, but I have to say because Filipinos are so nice to travel with on our last tour, the entire boat was almost Filipino and they're just fun, just fun people to travel with. I feel like they're more laid back, more want to laugh than other Westerners. We're too uptight. They just handed us a snorkel and mask, so it looks like it's time to put away my camera and get out to the GoPro. Second spot is in the Marine Reserve. It's a protected area. It's also an area where you can see a lot of turtles. However, as we were coming over, I noticed all the boats are coming over here, or at least half of them, and people were already in the water. I don't know if anyone's seen a turtle yet, but I do know that people see them because I've heard about it in Port Barton. I think, though, doing group snorkeling tours is not as interesting for me anymore. I now understand why pe people do the private ones because you're going to see so many fins in your face and someone calls turtle and everybody runs for it and it's just it's a little bit stressful. I think just going on a snorkeling tour by yourself would be great. That said, the water here is beautiful. Right here it's so clear and it's so warm. So the other snorkeling spots, if we do them, I think I'm going to just swim. I forgot to mention that I also saw people standing on the coral. Not from our group, but from another one. Who doesn't know not to stand on the coral? My favorite girl. <laughs> I don't know what this spot is called, but it looks beautiful. And I think we might be having lunch, maybe. I don't know. It looks like other boats have stopped here for lunch. And then the water here looks gorgeous. Look how light blue. This looks like the Caribbean. So this is Exotic Island. We're going to be here for two hours. Not the softest sand, but oh, the water is so shallow and completely clear. All right, somebody's got their drone out, so maybe we should too. All 
All right, we found some shade here, which is fantastic since we're gonna be here for two hours. They must call it exotic beach for a reason. There are locals here too, which is good to see, or at least Filipinos. Other people are snorkeling, but I think I'm gonna give up on snorkeling for the day. It is very clear here, but no one talks about Port Barton as being this amazing snorkeling destination. And I think also when you're in spots where there's tons of traffic and boat traffic, the fish don't hang out there anyway. Oh, I wanted to check out this water first though because it is beautiful. This whole area, Exotic Island, really does feel like you're out in the middle of nowhere, even though there are a lot of boats here. I don't know how they fit us all in, but it still feels like, look, there's no one in the water. So over there, apparently, I think there's a canteen and they'll sell you things. It's so windy though. And it also looks like you can go to the top here for a better view. What a fantastic stop. I've actually really enjoyed that we're here for two hours. We can just relax. Alan already had a nap along with a lot of other people who I think were partying last night. It is hot though. I kept my shirt on because it is 38 degrees and the sun is just on us, but it is glorious. So if you just kind of want to spend a day out on the water, it's, I think the typical price is 1500 plus your environmental fee. In my case, what I did was I was running out of cash. And so I thought, oh, maybe I'll book online. And there was a Puerto Princesa uh, operator that offered to give it to me for 1300 with snorkeling included. But then my accommodation said, well, we can do the same. And so then Alan and I thought, well, we're eating the traditional Filipino food and saving money anyway. So let's pay cash. It goes directly to locals. And then uh, fingers crossed, we have enough money for the next two days. But I'm glad I did it. When I can, I like to buy local. But the Philippines, it's a little bit tricky with cash. And so I took out a lot when we were in Manila because HSBC has no fee. And we're just at the very, very end of that money. And so I didn't want to take out, you know, 10, $50 more uh, just for this, but so, so glad. So we got it for 1300. I think every play price is negotiable. So wherever you go, just ask, is that the best price? And definitely get the snorkeling included. It just makes things so much easier. Alan woke up from his nap and decided to come out. <laughs> How was the nap? How was the nap? Smooth. Smooth nap. Yeah. This sand is so soft. It's almost like mud. You can't get much more clear than this. This would be a great snorkeling spot if there were fish. Oh, it's looking good. Mm-hmm. I think is so. It yes, it is. It's, I think it's chicken. Oh, chicken yeah. All right, I was going to try to shoot myself carrying this plate, but Alan was like, no, that doesn't seem like a good idea. So much food here. Now this is the second tour we've taken. I think they just really get that people just want a lot of food. So there's pork, two different kinds of fish, calamari, chicken. We've got eggplant, it's a traditional dish here, mango, watermelon, more chicken, a different kind of fish. We've got some vegetables in there and I think I've got everything. So much food. And then they gave us Coca-Cola because it's the national drink of the Philippines. It's not, but it should be because Filipinos love Coca-Cola. It's been around since the American times and Alan snagged himself fish head <laughs> because nobody else wanted it. <laughs> Save it to the end. Alan wanted it. It was definitely a buffet. And I think they know that the people judge a tour based on how full they are and what the food was like. And this is definitely amazing.
It's very strong. <laughs> I worry about Alan getting lost here. But okay, no, he's swimming back. But this is a tough swim. This current is actually pretty strong. I guess I'll be the lifeguard if we need to. All right, we're off the boat this time. We're at Long Beach, which is a spot that I wanted to visit, but we decided not to because it was too far to drive. I think this is the longest beach in the Philippines, I think. I'm gonna have to check that and I'll let you know right there if I am right or not. But I'm pretty sure everybody talks about Boracay, but this is actually the longest beach in Philippines, I think is in Palawan. We are gonna take a walk, not around the whole beach because it's only, I think we only have 25 minutes here and then we have one more snorkeling spot. One dollar. When you're home, that's a big one. That is a big one. Looks like the ashtray that they have at our hotel. <laughs> now we know where they got it. <laughs> We met a Dutch couple who actually met in Ellen's area of Indonesia. And so they're just sharing, reminiscing about some places that they've been to. And it's so cute that they met in Indonesia and they actually know a lot of the country. We told them that Dutch people are so tall and we're so small, which you can see right there. We are going to go in the water. Last chance to get a dip because the next spot is a snorkeling spot that's supposed to be great. I still don't know if I feel like snorkeling yet, but this sadly is our last video from the Philippines. It was a short but sweet 30 days. However, I definitely want to come back. So we are thinking about going down to Mindanao, coming back, coming for a month, going to Mindanao and exploring that whole area. Then the next video, you're going to see us in Laos. It's a landlocked country, so no beaches. And I've never been there before, but I've started researching Lao food and I think it's going to be delicious. I think we're gonna have a little bit of a motorbike adventure doing a loop or maybe two. And then also I'm just so excited to see what this country is about because there's not a lot of information about it. I think Lao is one of those underrated countries. So if you want to follow along, please hit subscribe, the like button, Leave a comment below to let me know that you watched this video and I'll see you in the next one.